What's up, everyone? Chris from PickDogs.com here with your free Major League Baseball home run prop show for Sunday, August 27th, 2023. Just a reminder, if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed to our channel. Smash that thumbs up. It helps us out a ton. And if you're looking for my best bets, the games I love the most, including my daily $19 best bet, make sure you head on over to PickDogs.com and click the Premium Picks tab at the top of the page. But without further ado, let's get into the home run prop action for Sunday. Had a fantastic day with the home run props on Saturday. We managed a total of eight winners on uh, on Saturday's show. I know we give out a ton, but like I say, you don't have to pick every single one I give out. And hey, if you nailed any one of the eight, well, kudos to you. I mean, get some nice plus money back. Um, and like I, I always say, you know, you don't have to play every single one that I give out here. Um, this is just for me to sort of point you guys in the direction of the games and the player props that I'm looking at. Again, these are probably games that I'll probably have a couple of bucks on, but I think it's still worth noting that these are home run props that are very high risk, high reward. I don't recommend anybody dump their whole bankroll into these play these home run props. They're just there to have some fun with on the side for some pizza money or some coffee money. Nothing to go too crazy over. Um, like I said, I do know that you know some people like to play probably these home run props though. Um, I recommend just playing them straight up. Whatever you do, take from here. Again, you don't have to play every single play. But if you are going to do a parlay, any parlay that's three legs or more, I recommend looking into a round robin. It is going to drive up the cost of your of your wager in total, but it's also going to give you a safety net in case something doesn't go you know completely your way. How many times have we all had that three or four leg parlay that you know we got we were one leg off, but unfortunately because we didn't have a round robin, a safety net underneath us, we didn't get paid on anything. But, you know, if you do a five, a, say you do a three-leg parlay for five bucks and you put five bucks on every bet you make, you put five bucks on the three-legger and then five bucks on every combination of two. So instead of five a $5 bet, it'll be 20. But if you hit two out of three, you still win something. You know, the, the more legs you have, the more expensive a full-on round robin will be. Or you can only choose to, you know, say you do a five-leg parlay and, you know, you only want a round robin by two. So, you know, all the combinations of two. If you hit two, you still win something. You'd still win more if you'd hit three or four. But, hey, you know what? You take what you can get, and you know everybody's different with what they can afford and what's within their means. So, definitely play within your means. But uh, if it's something that you, if you're interested in, I definitely definitely recommend looking into it. Like I said, especially if you bet on a home run prop parlays. But uh, let's look at the plays that we did hit on Saturday. Like I said, we managed to cash eight in total. We did a ton of damage in that Seattle Kansas City game. I think there were like seven home runs hit by the uh, the Mariners in that game. Cal Raleigh came through for us big at plus 245. Uh, Julio Rodriguez, <clears throat> he managed to come through at uh, plus, two, plus 285. Uh, Teoscar Hernandez managed to come through at plus uh, 310. He came through. Um, and got Alex Bregman at plus 290. Or, excuse me, not plus 290. I was looking at another slide. Plus 700 we got with Alex Bregman. Uh, Yoan Moncada came through at plus 575. Also hit Andrew Benintendi at plus 650. This is when the real plus money payers started to, start to show up <clears throat> with these guys. Adelise Garcia came through at plus 380. And uh, to round things out, we got Mitch Garver at plus 525. But, uh, you know, that was yesterday. Today's a new day. We move on with the player props. And uh, we're going to have to go rapid fire, you know. I do try to get these videos out as early as possible, but, you know, the way the nature of our morning show and having to do all the researching and prepare everything for this show, and eh, sometimes it cuts it a little bit close. But you know what? We're not going to be focusing on the 12 o'clock, the first game of the day. Everything's going to be 1.35 p.m. Eastern on. Um, if you miss out on the early games, don't worry. There's going to be something for everybody here. You know, I have something for Sunday Night Baseball. I have the, the later afternoon um, baseball action. Um, but this is where you want to have notifications on because, like I said, sometimes the video cuts a little bit close between now and, like when the video is released and first pitch. So if you have notifications on, you get notified as soon as the content drops and you get to get the best bets in. But uh, let's move on to the first game of the day. We're going to go to the Baltimore Orioles and Colorado Rockies. Like I said, we're going to go quick fire today for the Orioles. We're going to go with uh, a few players against lefty Ty Block. Block has a lot of home run in three of his last four starts. We're going to start with Ryan Mountcastle. He's got three home runs, 430, a 438 average in the last 10 days against lefties. Austin Hayes, who's got a 333 average with two homers and four extra base hits in the last 10 days against lefties as well. Hadley Rutschman, a 350 average with three extra base hits the last 10 days. And Gunnar Henderson, who's got a 348 average with a homer and three extra base hits the last 10 days against lefties as well. On the other side for the Rockies against Jack Flaherty, who has allowed a home run in five of his last six starts, six home runs total. Um, I'm going to go with Jerks, Jerks and Profar. Now, Profar has struggled against righties, a sub-100 average. Um, against righties in uh, in the last 10 days. But in his career against Flaherty, four for eight, all four hits have gone for extra bases, including two home runs. 
I'm also going to look at Elias Diaz, who's hitting 500 with two homers, two extra, uh, excuse me, a home run and two extra base hits in the last 10 days against righties. And Nolan Jones, who's hitting 294 with a homer and three extra base hits in the last 10 days against righties as well. And moving on to Fenway, we're going to go with the Dod <clears throat> excuse me, the Dodgers and Red Sox. My voice is killing me today. Uh, we're going to go with the Dodgers against Tanner Houck. I'm going to start with Max Muncy. He's got a home run, four extra base hits with a 214 average um, in the last 10 days against right-handed pitching. Also going to go with Mookie Betts. At, um, he's hitting 556 with a home run, three extra base hits the last 10 days against righties. I also lean towards Freddie Freeman and, and uh, Kike Hernandez as well. For the Red Sox, we go with Adam Duvall. He's got a 385 average with four homers, eight extra base hits overall in the last 10 days. So I'm going to go with uh, Adam Duvall here for the Red Sox, what looks to be a bullpen game for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Um, I'm going to go with Alex Verdugo. Um, he's got three home runs, seven extra base hits with a 395 average the last 10 days overall. I also got Rafael Devers, who's got three homers, five extra base hits uh, in the last 10 days overall with a 364 average of his own. Now I'm going to go quick fire two games on one graphic. I'm going to just start with the Phillies here against the, uh, the Cardinals. I'm going pure Phillies in this one against Drew Rahm, who got lit up for eight runs, six earned um, in three and two thirds innings in his MLB debut with giving up a home run as well to the Pirates. I'm going to start with Bryce Harper. He's got a 500 average with a homer, two extra base hits against lefties in the last 10 days. Also, look at Kyle Schwarber, who's two for five with a homer and a double in the last 10 days against lefties. And uh, Alec Bohm, who's got a home run with a 500 average in the last 10 days against right, uh, lefties as well. On the others, in the next game for the Blue Jays against the Guardians, going strictly Blue Jays here, as the, uh, the Guardians have been one of the worst teams in baseball against lefties, and Yusei Kikuchi has been pretty good. Um, but for the Blue Jays against Noah Syndergaard, who's allowed seven home runs and four starts in the month of August, I'm going to go with Brandon Belt, uh, who's got four homers, a 300 average in the last 10 days against righties. I'm also going to go with George Springer, um, who's got two homers, four extra base hits in the last 10 days against righties with a 250 batting average. And Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who's got a home run and two extra base hits in the last 10 days against righties with a 346 average of his own. Now going on to the uh, Tigers and Astros game here. Not often I do home run props against Justin Verlander, but these are two guys that I consistently roll through my rotation for home run props with the Tigers. Kerry Carpenter, who's got four homers, five extra base hits, a 385 average last 10 days against righties. And Spencer Torkelson, who's got a homer and four extra base hits in the last 10 days against righties with a 304 average. On the other side for the Astros against Alex Fado, who's got three home runs allowed in his last three starts. I'm going to go with Alex Bregman, who's got a 259 average with a homer. Three extra base hits the last 10 days against righties. I'm also going to go with Yiner Diaz, who's got a homer and a 320 average the last 10 days against righties as well, with a lean towards Mauricio Dubon and Kyle Tucker. Now, moving ahead to this matchup between the Marlins and the Nationals, this NL East rivalry. Got tough for the Marlins against Trevor Williams. Williams has been an absolute you know, batting practice, you know, that, that little machine that he had as a kid that would launch the ball to you and sort of underhand it. Yeah, that's what Williams has been doing. Um, Home run allowed in six of his last seven starts. Ten home runs total. Jorge Soler going to be a play for me for the Marlins. He's got a home run in his career against Trevor Williams. Three extra, uh, three home runs with a 238 average and four extra base hits in the last ten days against righties. It's going to be Jorge Soler. And I'm also going to look at Jake Berger. I'm starting to get a little bit hungry looking at Jake Berger. That sounded weird. <laughs> now that I said Berger, that's what I meant to say now that I'm hungry. That's, a, that, that's one you got to clip. All right, we got Jake Berger uh, for a home run, a 400 average with a homer, two extra base hits last 10 days against righties. I also lean towards Josh Bell as well. I'm still stuck shaking my head about that one. Um, <laughs> for the Nationals, in what looks to be um, a bullpen game with uh, JT Chagua uh, starting here for the um, the uh, the Marlins. I'm going to go with Carter Kaboom, who's got two homers, three extra base hits with a 256 average in the last 10 days overall. And Lane Thomas has got three extra base hits at a 286 average in the last 10 days overall as well. Now I'm going to, again, go with a two-game slide here. We're going to go with the Rays and Yankees. Rays against Carlos Verdone, man. Verdone has stunk for much of this season. I mean, this is a guy that, you know, you paid, what, $160 million if you're the Yankees? And it's it's been terrible for Radon. I'm sorry. I just don't know how to sugarcoat it. He has a lot of home runs. Six of his seven starts as a Yankee. Nine home runs total in those starts. Going to go with Isaac Paredes, who's got a 600 average with a home run, three extra base hits in the last 10 days against lefties. And Randy Arozarena, who's got a 250 average with a home run in the last 10 days against lefties as well. On the other side, or excuse me, in the other game <clears throat> for the A's and the White Sox, going to go strictly A's here. I'm starting to like the Oakland A's for some home runs here. they got some young guys that have been coming up. 
and have been hitting hitting the ball fairly well as of late. As now this team's really got nothing to play for. Now they've been eliminated from playoff contention. I mean, let's face it, they were eliminated in April when they were taking the field. But anyways, um, for the Oakland A's against Mike Clevenger, who has been pretty good at home, but uh, still, I'm, I'm I'm so done with the White Sox. And to go with uh, Brent, Brent Rooker. He's got two homers, four extra base hits in the last 10 days against righties with a 240 average. Also going with Shea Langoliers, who's got a 200 average with three homers against righties in the last 10 days. And Zach Geloff, who's got a 296 average with two homers, three extra base hits in the last 10 days against righties as well. Now going on to this match between the Brewers and the Padres. A pretty good pitching matchup here, at least I think so. Um, but for the Brewers against Michael Walker, now Walker hasn't allowed a whole lot, but I do like Willie Adamas here. Three home runs with a 296 average the last 10 days against right-handed pitching. And Carlos Santana, who's got two homers with a 217 average in the last 10 days against righties as well. I do lean towards Christian Yelich and Rowdy Telez. Uh, Walker had a start against the, uh, the, the, uh, the Padres earlier this season. Gave up seven runs in just over four innings of work. Uh, Yelich went yard in that game. Telez went yard twice, I believe. Um, neither one of them hitting all that well for power right now, but I think it might still be worth a shot. They'll probably get some nice plus money with it. Um, on the other side for the San Diego Padres against Adrian Hauser, who has allowed a home run in five of his last seven starts. I'm going to roll with Manny Machado, who's got four homers with a 250 average against righties in the last 10 days. And Xander Bogarts. Now, Bogarts has been dreadful at the plate himself. You know, three home, uh, excuse me, Three hits in the last uh, the last 10 days against righties, but all three hits have gone for home runs with a 115 batting average. So if you're willing to take the risk on uh, Bogarts with the batting average, it's, like I said, this could be this is high risk, high reward at its finest. Um, it's really been all or nothing for Bogarts, and well, I think you get some nice plus money with him as well. And moving on to um, this matchup between the Twins and the Rangers, and to go strictly Rangers in this game, as I just don't love the matchup for the Twins against lefty uh, Jordan Montgomery. Maybe once you get to the bullpen, if you have any twins, you could drop them in the comments below if there's anybody you like in that one. But for me with the Rangers, you know, Obrey's a lot of home runs, seven straight starts, nine home runs total allowed in that stretch. I'm going to roll with Mitch Garver, who's got four home runs in the last 10 days against righties with a 207 average. I'm also going to go with Corey Seager, who's got a 286 average with two homers, four extra base hits in the last 10 days against righties. And Nathaniel Lau has got a home run and three extra base hits in the last 10 days against righties with a 370 average. I also lean towards Adelise Garcia in that one. Moving on to the Diamondbacks and Reds. Uh, the Diamondbacks against Graham Ashcraft, who has pitched well for the um, the Reds as of late. He's gone seven plus innings in each of his last four starts, but he still allowed six home runs total in those four starts. The majority of those have been solo homers, but still home runs nonetheless. And uh, I'm going to go with Corbin Carroll, who's got three extra base hits with a 409 average. Last 10 days against righties. I also lean towards Christian Walker on that side. On the other side for the Cincinnati Reds against Slade Shikoni, Um, I'm going to go with uh, Matt McClain. He's got two homers the last 10 days against righties with a 231 batting average. I also lean towards Ellie De La Cruz and Spencer Steer as well. On the other side for the Se- uh, excuse me, on the next game, uh, Seattle Mariners. We're going to go back to the scene of the crime where we did a ton of damage. Oh, maybe we could do it again here. I really think we legitimately could. Um, I might do a same game parlay of these three guys for the Mariners here uh, against Alec Marsh, who has a lot of home run in each of his first six starts, 10 home runs total. I'm going to go with Teoscar Hernandez, who got three homers, six extra base hits with a 394 average last 10 days against righties. Uh, Cal Raleigh with a 391 average with three homers, five extra base hits. And uh, Julio Rodriguez, a 545 average with three homers, five extra base hits in the last 10 days against righties. I lean towards Mike Ford as well. you got to remember, you know, the Royals still also, once Marsh leaves, have one of the worst bullpens in baseball as well. So that's worth definitely looking into. I, like I said, I might do a round-robin three-player three same-game parlay with uh, Tay Oscar, Kyle Raleigh, and Julio Rodriguez. I really like that. But uh, for the Kansas City Royals, we're going to go with Bobby Witt Jr. Two homers, five extra base hits with a 300 average in the last 10 days against righties on the other side. And our last game of the day, Sunday Night Baseball. We're going to go to the Braves and Giants game. For the Braves, what looks to be a, a, another bullpen game for the San Francisco Giants. We're going to go with Marcelo Zuna. He's got four homers, six extra base hits in the last 10 days overall with a 483 batting average. Um, Eddie Rosario, a 500 average with two home runs, three extra base hits the last 10 days overall. And Orlando Arcia, who's got two homers in the last 10 days as well. I lean towards Ronald Acuna, Matt Olson, Austin Riley. They all haven't been hitting the ball all that well, not for average or for power, but I always put them in as leans just because the Braves lineup has been so good that these guys can really just step onto the field. Even if they're in the midst of like an 0 for 24 slump, 
and they can still they can still come in and, and absolutely crush one uh, you know in, into McCovey Cove. So definitely it's worth looking into. Uh, for the Giants on the other side against lefty Jared Schuster, only one play. Um, Schuster making his first start since late June. I'm going to go with Wilmer Flores, who's got two homers and a 375 batting average in the last 10 days against lefties to round things out. But again, thank you guys so much for sticking with me. Again, we tried to go rapid fire. I know a lot of people want to get these plays in for the uh, the early action, so we're trying to fit, fire this out for you. Um, again, we're up over 138,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. Couldn't have done the without your guys' love and support, so thank you so much for that. If you haven't already, Make sure that you're subscribed to our channel. Smash that thumbs up. It really helps us out a ton. It doesn't cost you a cent. It lets me know that you guys like this home run pop content. And again, make sure you have notifications on so you can get notified when the freshest content drops. Again, sometimes we do cut it close to first pitch of the afternoon games. But we still try to get them in. We still want to make sure that you, get, you guys get some action in there. I will always make sure that you have something on the board. Um, if you're looking for my best bets, again, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. But while you're at Pick Dogs and Sports Chat Place, check out our betting tools. They're 100% free. They are there for you to use. They'll do the heavy lifting for you. They are great, a great asset to have on your belt when you're making your best bets for the day's action. They show you player props. They show you how often the player prop hits. And they show you which sports book is giving you the best price. The great part about that is if you don't have an account with the book that's giving you the best price, you click on that price. As a new customer, you'll get a bonus offer. You sign up. You get to play that price with that bonus offer. But you're also getting to uh, add to your advantage over the books that they can't take from you, which is your ability to shop lines and find the best possible number. There's something for everybody with these betting tools. If you like betting streaks, there's a hot and cold streaks tool. If you're a parlay better, there's multiple parlay builders there for you that'll put a parlay together based on the sports you like to bet on or the types of bets you like to play, whether it's spreads, money lines, totals, player props. Um, you know, there's profitable teams, angles, underdogs, and these tools will still show you the best price wherever and where you can find it. The list goes on and on. You know, the one thing that unites us all is sports betting. Yeah, we all have different ways that we like to bet our money and different ways we like to play, whether it's straight bets or parlays or what have you. But the one thing that unites us all, how much we like to make money. And these betting tools will do that for you. You just got to go over and check them out. I promise you guys, you won't regret it. But thank you so much for watching again. Let's crush the books on Sunday and finish the week strong.